We discussed here uh, the bone marrow stem cell and the cord blood stem cell and the possible using of these cells to um, regenerate different damaged tissue. Today we're going to talk about a cell that's a type of stem cell that's not so widely known. It derives from the amniotic fluid. Specifically, we'll review a paper that was published in Nature Biotechnology uh, in the beginning of 2007. Now, what the investigators did here is they took samples from the amniotic, flu amniotic fluid of pregnant women, um, amniocentesis, and they purified a cell population that expresses the Merkur C kit. It's a protein that's found on stem cells. And they were able to grow cells, C kit positive cells, they were able to grow them as adherent cells in tissue culture using alpha MEM media with 15% fetal calf serum. Now, what's very interesting is when these cells are grown, they express markers of mesenchymal stem cells. They don't express markers of hematopoietic stem cells, but they express some markers of embryonic stem cells, such as SSCA4 and ACT4. The interesting thing is that these cells, again, these are from the amniotic fluid, they are not for embryonic stem cells. Now, the first characterization of a stem cell, or one of the most important points, is can the cell be expanded with the chromosomal uh, phenotype remaining intact? In other words, if you make these cells to multiply a lot in tissue culture, will they still be uh, genetically normal? And as you can see in this picture, this is the karyotype of the cells after 250 doublings. 250 times the cells are multiplied, so 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and so on, and still the genetic karyotype remain normal. In other experiments, which I didn't show, they implanted the cells into the mice, which lack an immune system, and there was no teratoma formed. This is a very important point because teratoma is a type of cancer that gets formed when you inject embryonic stem cells. But with these cells, you don't have the fear of teratoma. So the question is, how can these cells continually multiply to such a great number and still be genetically normal? And one of the important characteristics is that the cells are able to maintain telomere length. So, if you look in the figure here, the um, lane 1, this is a telomere, a short telomere. This is a control, is what it looks like. Lane 2 is the control of a long telomere. A uh, long telomere being a cell that's a young cell. Now, if you look lane 3, it's the amniotic fluid stem cells after 20 doublings, and lane 4 after 250 doublings. And as you can see, they maintain short telomeres, implying that the cells can multiply and maintain telomere length. Now, when we call these cells stem cells, why do we say stem cells? Well, because they are shown to be able to differentiate into a variety of different tissues. So, in this figure, you can see the cells were induced to differentiate into various lineages, such as myocyte lineage, uh, muscle, um, osteocyte lineage, uh, adipocyte lineage, fat, endothelial, hepatic, and neuronal lineage. And you can see um, they're differentiated because it's an RT-PCR sample showing expression of genes associated with these cell types. Now you may ask me, and you may ask the investigator, it's fine, you're showing that the cells express specific genes, but uh, have they really differentiated? Are they really making new tissue? So, to answer this question, the investigators induce the cells to differentiate into neurons. And, as you can see on this slide, the differentiated cells look like neurons, and they expressed the nestin protein, which is a protein found in neurons. So they look like neurons, they smell like neurons, if you will, but can they actually function as neurons? So, as you can see on the right-hand side of the figure, this on the y-axis is a, a concentration of glutamic acid, which is something neurons make in response to potassium flux. And these cells were treated with potassium, and as you can see, they made glutamic acid. So it's an indication that they can also function as neurons. If you read the paper, there are some figures in the paper where they show injection of the cells into mice, into the brains of mice, the cells can actually interdigitate and function with neurons in the mouse. 
So then the investigators also wanted to make sure that other tissue types were made correctly. So they induced the stem cells to differentiate into the hepatic lineage. And as you can see here on the y-axis is concentration of urea. Hepatocytes make urea, um, implying that they have some function like hepatocytes when, they differentiate, when they're differentiated. And in the other figure here, we see the, the cells are made to differentiate into bone tissue, and they uptake calcium, uh, which is calcium uptake on the y-axis. And then in the paper, if you look at the paper, there's some nice figures showing that the stem cells differentiated into bone. They can be put onto scaffolds and used to regenerate bone in in vivo animal models. So in conclusion, the investigators describe a brand new type of stem cell that's isolated from the amniotic fluid. Uh, amniocentesis is a very safe procedure which is commonly performed. Uh, these cells are not uh, ethically, uh, they don't have any ethical questions because they are from amniotic fluid, not from the fetus itself or from embryonic sources. And of course, most excitingly, the cells don't make teratomas, they don't uh, develop chromosomal abnormalities after we culture them a long time, and they can be made into functional tissue. Thank you very much.